Hello, champions. We've hammered, filed, and fretted our way to the final stage of this sword build. It's been an adventure, but all good things have to come to an end, and I bought a pile of fruit a few days ago. It's going to go bad if we don't get to choppy choppy. So, let's get this sword build wrapped up. Pun intended, you'll see. Well, I tally the votes in the comment section for part three of the video series for which guard you guys prefer. We'll start this pommel. This is 1018 Mild Steel. So there's lots of upsetting going on here and there's going to be sort of these cold shots in the tip as you can see but that's sort of the name of the game that's just more material at the narrow end that i don't have to remove when i'm making the hole or slot for the tang so this is my first sword uh again you know as you guys have figured out this is not really a how-to series more of just how i made my first sword and some of the things i learned so I'm still learning we're not going to do anything fancy with the pommel. All that to say, we're just going to keep things simple. This build has gone way over time, and as much as I'd like to get everything perfect, that time has come and gone. So, I'm not in hurry up, close it down, finish this, let's just get this done mode yet, but I really can't spend a whole lot of time. Probably not as much time as I want to spend. I've got some super bad news about the pommel, guys. We're not going to be ending anybody rightly. It's not going to be threaded. I'm going to drill a hole, make a slot for the tang, and then we're going to hot peen it. So these are the guard choices. The first was this railroad spike and file twist pattern guard with lots of gaps at the top. The second is this large and bulky version here, but it has a better fit. When I stopped counting your votes, the tally was about 103 to 99 in favor of the second guard, this bulkier one. I have some leftover 1070 steel used for the blade, and perhaps the first guard can go on a second sword project. We'll see how things go. Let's get it weighed up. The sword is a mighty two pounds, three ounces. It's a bit heavy. Guard number two, uh, 11 ounces. As it stands now, the pommel is nine ounces. So we're about three and a half pounds before our handle material is added, which will likely add a few ounces more. I think with shaping some pommel and some work on the guard, we can drop some weight, but we got a long ways to go. We've shaved about two and a half ounces off the pommel. That's not bad. Let's go to work on the guard. We've dropped almost three ounces off the second guard, and we've improved the profile. Our handle is going to be right at about 5 inches, including the spacer, and for an Oakshot 18A, that's okay. These tend to have longer handles, if what I read is correct, in the 4.5 to 5.5 inch range. By the way, even though we're dropping weight at the guard and pommel, that's really not where we want to be dropping weight. We really want the blade to be lighter. It's going to affect the balance if most of the weight is forward. We'll see. It's going to be nice to have a lighter sword. Whether or not the balance is correct, uh, that's going to be another issue. So here you can see I've tilted the block of wood so that we can get some drill holes along the profile of the tang.
So if you remember, this guard fit really well when red hot, but it shrinks when cold and it no longer really meets up with the blade. It doesn't go down far enough, so I'll have to try and force it on, which fails. So <laughs> I'll be marking it with this die and filing down the high points when I identify them. This is some cold bluing solution. It's going to make this a little darker than I can otherwise etch it. It's not the, you know, the best way to blue things, but it's really the only way I have to blue things. So we're going to roll with it. Next, the handle is going to be sanded and prepared here. We're going to try to use a metal wire wrap. So I've got two pieces of metal wire here. We're going to get it all twisted up and ready to wrap. I would like to protect the wood from things like sweat and moisture, so we, we put some stuff on it. I drilled a tiny hole there in the uh, handle, and then I put a slot leading from the hole to the side of the handle. And this will allow us to fix our metal wire in place for wrapping. Hopefully I can do something similar on the other end while keeping it tight. We'll see. And we ran out of wire. Wasn't long enough. So I'm going to have to try to get some more wire, but again, we got the time thing going on, so I've got to get this handle done. In the meantime, filing the guard, I opened up a few small gaps. I got a little bit overzealous. I don't think that's going to be a problem, but let's, let's talk about this because this is an issue for me. Um, where the guard meets the ricasso, my current approach is on a knife where you have a rectangular ricasso is to file in shoulders. So we'll cross section through that area, look at it on end, and this is what we have. We have a rectangle for the knife and a diamond or oval shape or something similar for the sword. The blue dotted lines are the ends of the tang, and our width is arbitrarily about a quarter inch for each piece. We're just going to use that number. So next we'll file in shoulders or small flat shelves that will allow the knife to rest on top of a flat guard. If the tang hole in the guard is large enough for the tang but too small for the rest of the knife around those shoulders, then it'll just sit right on top. And it's one technique that's very easy to use to eliminate gaps where the ricasso meets the guard. So here's the shoulders going in. And that's, that's where they're filed, and that pink area would be the shoulders, that perfectly flat shelf. If we do this some, something similar with the sword, you can see that the tang ends up being pretty thin, possibly too thin to support the weight of a sword, because the cross-sectional shape of the sword is as it is. If we make the tang wider, it gets even thinner. And if we make it thinner, it, it loses more depth than the other dimension, also weakening the tang, although that's probably a better option. Another option is to, to file a shelf in the shape of the sword, although... No one wants to try to mill or file a diamond or oval uh, shape around a tang or in a guard. So um, I think the answer is to try to keep the bottom area of that sword more rectangular like you would do in a knife and then file shoulders. I mean, at any rate, I don't know. That's just sort of where I'm at with that whole process and eliminating that gap. That would be one thought that I have, one way to do that. I don't see how I can otherwise file shoulders, which is the technique I use in a knife. There's our epoxy. We're applying it in the gap. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention I did tack weld um, half of the guard on there. 
I'm going to be tilting it, turning it upside down while the epoxy is uh, uncured. JB Weld takes a while to cure. So to keep the guard approximated in the same exact spot, I just tack welded that area while I'm maneuvering it around and turning it upside down to fill all the gaps. I'm going to scrape this shark skin and then we'll choose a dye color. I'm not a leather working guy. I've never really scraped leather before, so I'm sure a lot of you will have pointers about uh, my technique here. I sort of like that middle one. It's going to go on a little darker than it did in my sample, but that's okay. It still looks good. And as that dries, I'm going to start wrapping the handle with this hemp twine, just because everyone else does. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. The, I don't know what function this serves. I'm, I'm sure it does something useful, but. I'm going to put some stabilizer on the leather, then we'll start gluing things up here on the handle. I've never really done this before. It's a bit of a challenge to manage the glue, the handle, and contouring the leather all at the same time without making a tremendous mess. Um, so I did my best, but as you'll see, it's not very good. The handle's wrapped overnight in twine because that's what everyone else does. I guess that keeps it all together while the glue's drying and makes a cool little grip pattern. So that side looks pretty cool. If I had half a brain, I'd orient the grain going up and down to mask that, the seam. Man, that thing did not turn out good. It really sort of pulled apart, I think, while it was drying, and then I never really got certain areas of it well approximated. But as much as it pains me, there's no time to rewrap this handle. I've got to get this project done and this video in the can. I can cut it away later and rewrap it when time permits, but I have to live with this for now. I'm not going to seat the handle on the tang. It's just not something I do a lot of. Um, I, I feel like I've got this filled very well with epoxy. It's ready to piece together. Everything's been shaped and attached. And so I don't know that seating the tang would, you know, serve a purpose right now. So we're just going to glue the handle on the tang without seating it. Because I'm going to heat the pommel during peening, and the pommel gaps are being filled with this high temperature filler instead of epoxy. I'm going to hammer this down to get it as tight as possible before painting and then the act of painting will also tighten things down a bit more too. That little hobby torch never really gets it hot enough to paint all that effectively so it's just a lot of smacking for about five or ten minutes. <laughs> In fact, it actually splits some of the ends a little bit on that tang. So even though I got it hammered down, I had to go back and just arc weld it and then grind it flat. Three pounds, three ounces. Man, just heavier than I wanted, but... I cannot tell you how badly that handle bothers me, but I can fix the wrap later. The gaps, you know, they did pretty well with that JB Weld. And overall, for my first sword, 
I have to say, I like it. I, I think it's great. It looks good. I love this project. It was so much fun, guys. I can't tell you. I learned a tremendous amount. I have a new respect for the guys who do this all the time. All right, one more thing. This is where our point of balance is. And as I get it sharpened up and prepare for slicey dicey, it's, it's just heavy and it's bothering me. So I'm going to mark this here and then I'm going to try to grind some off the distal portion of the blade and see if maybe taking an ounce off this area here doesn't improve the point of balance, make it slightly lighter. And so I, I've actually taken about an ounce off, just over an ounce, and it moves the point of balance back towards the handle, not quite half an inch. Uh, move it from there to there. There to there, yeah. So maybe I can squeeze another ounce or so off the end of the sword and move it back a little further and make it a little more wieldy. But first, it's time for some fun. I'm a straight up fruit ninja them. How will I know? I'm gonna try to get them all together. <laughs> <laughs> 